Oh, I suddenly don't feel well. I'm gonna... Wait, hold on, where am I? H Hello? Hello? S Strider? No, mortal. I am Anubis, god of death, mummification, and guardian of souls on their journey to the afterlife. Anubis? Yes, that is what I said. Wait, where the hell am I? You have died, and I am going to see if you are worthy of entering the realm of Duat. The hell's Duat? The Egyptian underworld, the afterlife. I will ask the questions, mortals. Do stop talking. Oh, okay, so it, the afterlife is ancient Egypt's afterlife. It is, it's just Egypt. Egypt's afterlife. Color me surprised. All right, scale of one to ten. How screwed am I? Oh, you are quite screwed, sir. Six out of ten if you'd like to know the exact number, but we will find out when we put your heart on the scale. Oh. The weighing of the heart. I've heard of this. What do I need to do? Do I have to cut it out myself, or do you just take it out like an Aztec priest, or like how- So I will use my teeth to rip it out of your chest. Got it. Okay. Um, just hang on. Just back it up real quick. How screwed am I? Present your heart to me, mortal. Whoa. Now let's put your heart upon the scale and test it against the feather of Matt and see if you are worthy of meeting with Osiris and Ra. Dude, I gotta stop doing drugs. What is this? All right. Wait a minute. Are you a wolf? Or are you a dog? Or are you a jackal? Or a fox? Like, make up your mind. Okay, so sorry you had to see all that, but here's what's here's what we're gonna talk about today. What is Anubis? Is he is he a wolf? Is he a jackal? Is he a dog? The question I asked in that very cringy video that I made two years ago for someone else's channel, um, Raven, you should give your follow, uh, was what is Anubis? Is he a dog? Is he a jackal? Is he a fox? Is he a wolf? I don't know. Actually, I do know because I studied this. Um, I didn't study this specifically, but I studied the relationship between humans and dogs, and that is ethnocynology, the study of the human and dog relationship, right? So the question I asked in that very cringy video that I made two years ago for someone else's channel, um, Raven, you should give her a follow, uh, was, what is Anubis? Is he a dog? Is he a jackal? Is he a fox? Is he a wolf? So let me get into it. Anubis is the Greek word for his name, right? His actual Egyptian name was Anpu, which probably means to decay. It has something to do with death. That would make a little sense, right? Anubis is the Greek word that he was given, or the Greek name that he was given. And if you don't know your history, uh, after Alexander the Great died, uh, he told his friends that the empire should go to the strongest. And of course, being very toxic masculine men were like, I'm the strongest, and they fought over it uh, vehemently for years. Ptolemy Soter took Egypt. The others weren't thrilled about that because everyone wanted Egypt. Um, he took it and owned Egypt for a very long time until Cleopatra, actually, who was a descendant of Ptolemy. Uh, until, you know, her death. So, and the Roman, and the subsequent Roman conquest, we'll say that. Yeah, so it, it was called Anubis, which sounds more Greek than, you know, Anpu. But anyways, that's the whole thing. And, and Anpu, meaning to decay, is pretty associated with death, right? And he's the god of the dead. He's not the god of death, that's Osiris. He's the god of the dead, and I'll get to that. He's one of the oldest gods in Egyptian culture, from the pre-dynastic period, actually, so a very long time. Um, and he's, you know worshipped for a long time, but then the other gods start to phase in and they're more worshipped than he is, but he's always been relevant. Anubis is ever there as our friend. Anubis is there to help guide souls from the living world to the dead. He's not evil, he's not wicked, and he has no ill will towards humans. He's loyal to the gods, but he's also loyal to mortal humans. And that's interesting because he's a dog in a way. And we see our dogs as friends, but people in the past didn't necessarily see dogs the same way, but there is a cross-cultural pattern of dogs having to do with death. Think about it. Fenrir, right? Swallows the sun during Ragnarok. 
pretty, pretty deadly. Uh, in Aztec mythology, when you die and you go to the nine lands of the dead, you have to cross this river and your dogs that have died before you wait for you on that riverbank and then they want to help ferry you across the river and guide you through the nine lands of the dead so you don't do it alone. Sholach is the god of fire and lightning, but he also has a lot to do with death. And specifically to do with death, he also helps guide souls to the afterlife. Very interesting. Uh, another dog that we might know of from an afterlife story like this is Cerberus, right? He's the right-hand man of Hades, or sometimes he guards the river Styx and he, he vets the wicked and the, the, the just from getting in there. It depends on the translation of the story, but it's always something to do with the afterlife. Now, I, I'm going on a little tangent here, but why, why is that the case? Why do the Egyptians and the Aztecs and, and many other cultures, especially indigenous American cultures, attribute dogs with something to do with death? Okay, this is me two years later. Maybe better looking, maybe worse looking, who knows. Addressing this issue, I know some of you are about to just comment and rip me up about this. The translation that I read said that it was Fenrir that swallows the sun. Okay, in the other translations that apparently everyone else knows is, and probably the more, and they're probably right, is that it's his two sons swallow the sun and the moon. God damn it. <laughs> to tell you that, yeah, I, uh, apparently I was wrong in saying that. It's not, the translation that I read was that Fenrir swallows the sun during Ragnarok. I, apparently that is just vehemently wrong because everyone just ripped me to shreds on TikTok about that one. Apparently it's his two sons that eat the sun and the moon. Or they just eat the moon. I can't remember what it was. There were three different versions that I read. But the point being is the kid's got a sword stuffed into his mouth. And when that sword is pulled, the world can end because then he can clench his jaws down. You get the point. Chill out. He has to do with death, okay? He's, he's a big bad wolf that eats things and bit off Tyr's hand. So, what can you do? In Egypt, there's wolves and jackals and foxes, but it, it's debated what, what is he? Now, jackals are definitely common. The golden jackal lives in, in North Africa. And the interesting thing here is jackals are often seen at night scavenging tombs or scavenging cemeteries. They're associated with that. Well, firstly, if they're desecrating tombs and the dead, you'd think that was a bad thing. In regards to life and death, Egyptians usually try to make things seem more positive. So that when they saw jackals associating with dead bodies and tombs and, and burials, they associated jackals as protecting those tombs and, and guiding souls and that's where Anubis kind of comes from now black is not a color of jackals in Africa it's just not the, the main thing is that black and his name being Inpu or Anpu to decay is it has to do with death it's a, it's a death color and also in Egyptian mythology Black is also the color of life because the Nile, when it's fertile, creates black fertile soil and that gives life. So it's this weird cyclical thing. Dogs are there for you. To make this a little more confusing, recent genetic evidence has shown that the African golden jackal is actually the African golden wolf. And that's confusing because those things all end up in the genus Canis. And then let's, let's step aside. Dogs are in the genus Canis, which is means dog in Latin, right? But then we have lupus. Canis lupus is the gray wolf, and then there's Canis lupus familiaris is the dog. Now, there's different variations of wolves all over the world, and they have different subspecies names in there, like timber wolves, red wolves, gray wolves, all those things, but there's also coyotes and jackals. Canis latrans is the coyote. Canis anthus is the jackal. Whether it's a wolf or a jackal, it does it, it's just a word we attribute to it, right? But the point is those animals were scavenging tombs and they do the same thing. That's where the Egyptian idea of Anubis comes from, or likely does, we can't say for sure, but they did like their animals and they paid attention to animal behavior. So that makes a lot of sense to me. An article by Evans 2008 called The Anubis Animal, A Behavioral Solution? Evans posits that possibly that Anubis is just an amalgamation of all of the canid creatures that the Egyptians knew of. So wolves, jackals, and foxes combined, and domestic dogs. That would make a lot more sense, right? They have something to do. There's the loyalty aspect of dogs, there's the scavenging aspect of jackals, and then there's the noble aspect of wolves. That, just all kind of goes hand in hand. And if you look at like statues of Anubis, it's really hard to tell what he is. He's way too slender for a wild animal, but he's also not domestic because there are paintings of domestic dogs in, in Egypt and they're specifically made to look not like Anubis. So it's, it's interesting. 
And lastly, let's move on to burials and mummification and funeral rites. In, in a story, Osiris' body gets messed up. I think Seth is the one who does it, cuts his body up into different pieces, and Isis is trying to put him back together. And in the process, Anubis helps Isis find Osiris' body into mummified parts. Anubis was the first to mummify somebody, and it's to preserve their body so that they can make it to the afterlife better. That's a whole other story. It gets kind of weird. It has to do with a penis at some point, but it's an interesting topic. And, and lastly, there's lots of burials uh, in Egypt with humans and dogs together. Obviously, cats are all over the place too, cat burials, but humans and dogs. And then there's a, a huge mass grave of dogs found in Egypt, which are pretty interesting too. And they are clearly offerings to the god Anubis, as evidenced by objects around the site. And it's pretty cool. Silence, fool. You've done enough talking for one life. Do not need to repeat the same mistakes in the next. Now back to the scales. Oh! For the record, I identify as a jackal. So, thank you for explaining that, but you could have just asked. And secondly, you have passed the test. Now, you must confess your sins. Oh, dude. <laughs> I've done a lot of stupid I killed a bug once. You know I need better stuff than that. Yeah, I, know. I, th I thought I thought maybe that was what you're looking for. Um, I one time convinced my entire eighth grade class that I spoke Japanese. What? How in the world would you manage something like that? I learned a whole bunch of Japanese words and I pretended to speak Japanese to my dad on the phone. It was actually pretty convincing. I don't even know where to begin to unpack the psychological issues in which you have, but All right. uh, continue. These are along the lines of the things which I would like to know. Ripped a mattress tag off my mattress when it said that is illegal. Pathetic. I didn't clean up my dog's shit one time at the dog park because I couldn't find it. Borderline criminal. Keep going. Um, I have murdered a guy. Who hasn't? Continue. I mean, I have some envy. I can neither confirm nor deny if I have done any drugs. I didn't call my mother on Mother's Day this year. I mail-in voted. Uh, one time a date was going so bad that I pretended to fall asleep on the couch so that I could leave. No, that's just depressing. Yeah. And then this one time I, I started doing a whole bunch of and this then I was like, whoa, dude. And then I was like, this is bad. And I, one of those things, and it was just, it went all around and it, it was really, really bad. And I swear to God, like, I'll never do it again. Wow. I do not believe I've ever heard that one. First off, just wow. Um... I don't even know how to process this one. We'll just, straight up, I'm gonna have to tell Osiris about this one and go to my boss, because I do not know what to do I about that. I know, I, I, I know, that one's bad. That one is bad, yeah. Is that gonna harm me? Okay. All right, mortal, you have passed your tests. Now let's continue on. So we get to go meet Osiris, right? Is this gonna be a party, or is this kind of just like a, I gotta farm for eternity kind of thing? Oh yeah, you'll be farming for eternity with your dog and whatever treasures and clothing you bring with you. But you will be farming. Well, I, d I didn't know that I was going to do what? I thought maybe I would just die. I didn't have a legal will. I, don't, I didn't expect to die today. You think I'm gonna bring treasure with me? Silence, fool. You will be farming. Oh God, is that Nate? Nate, Nate, What's Nate, up, guys? Nate. What's up, dude? <laughs> That's my girl, Wendy. She's chill, you know, like she just out and she does whatever. Hey, get the f out of here. Hey, no, yeah, go. No, get, get, get out, out of here. Come on, get, boy. Get. Thank you. Go. You've made a whole video in which people can see the inside of your head. I'm here. This isn't even in the video. I'm in your living. I'm in your cave right now. Wait, what? This isn't even in your head. I'm in the cave right now talking to you. Like, this is. Oh, God, right. Honestly, you should probably get that checked out because before it was okay, now it's like an issue. Suns swallow the sun and the moon. God damn it. Dog domestication. <laughs> oh, what's up, bro? Silence, fool. 